Good afternoon, everybody. And um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, and Zeke for giving us this opportunity to present this paper. Um, we've already been introduced, but I just want to add a little bit more with that introduction. Um, Ian actually got immense experience in um, public sector audit. He actually trained some of the uh, auditors of the Chinese public sector, in fact, quite a while ago. Highway, our Mandarin speaking team member, who actually um, um, who actually translated all those Mandarin uh, uh, documents and also um, uh, that um, Chinese National Audit Office, um, their Mandarin website. Uh, I just want to tell you something that whatever they put up in their website in English is quite different than whatever they put up <laughs> <laughs> in their Mandarin version. Okay, so I found really some significant differences in these two versions. We'll also appreciate it, I mean, if you hold on to your questions towards the end of the presentation, uh, uh, we'll be grateful. I mean, that is when we'll be able to take the notes and everything easily. Uh, moreover, some of the questions you may have at the beginning, that might be explained in the later slides. So please hold on your questions until, or suggestions until the end of the presentations. This paper has already been accepted in an international conference to be held in Beijing. Highway is going to present that paper this month. Uh, we are a bit afraid our findings may not be liked by Chinese authorities. So I told Highway to keep in touch with Australian consulate over there uh, uh, so that she gets necessary helps after her presentations. Okay, so I start with um, giving backgrounds of the paper uh, briefly. That is, that's true, that is what you said. Um, one of the essential, um, one of the essential um, fundamental um, criteria of a quality audit is audit independence. We have seen about Arthur Anderson, uh, how it collapsed when Enron, you know, um, uh, became bankrupt. And um, uh, we, have, we have seen numerous other examples um, how audit independence affected the quality of the audit report. And uh, the, the credibility of the audit report depends on how independently an auditor was pre able to prepare his or her um, audit report. I mean, this quality uh, of the audit not only affects internal management control, it also affects uh, the decision of the external stakeholders. So independence is really a very, very crucial, independence of auditor is a crucial issue. And that's why it always actually uh, created curiosity among academics um, uh, to explore further how independence um, actually affecting um, uh, firms' various issues, their stakeholders' various issues, and all those things. So, uh, our motivation, um, uh, the motivation actually um, came from the fact that, um, that um, uh, the studies, I mean, that exist, they mainly explored the audit independence in the private sector context. And there's a relative dearth of literature on public sector audit. And um, uh, there are now, in, there are now increasing paces on you know that accountability, transparency, um, outcome, output, efficiency, those kind of things in public sector. And as a result, people are now more concerned about the public sector audit and the independence issue and the quality issues, okay? But research in private sector, whatever we have, they're not really helping us to understand the, the issues of public sector audit. Okay, so that's our motivation. We want to see that what's happening in, in public sector audit. And now, um, why Chinese National Audit Office? Okay, uh, it's the second largest economy in the world at this moment, but um, uh, and, and second largest economy and the national wealth actually, a majority of the national wealth actually controlled by the public sector. But China is perceivably, with my, my due respect to my Chinese colleagues here, 
China is perceived externally as a country with relatively corrupt public sector. According to Transparency International Index, their ranking is 75, whereas Australian ranking is 8. So you can see the difference between uh, the level of corruptions uh, between these two countries. So, so audit actually, audit is an important factor for public sector governance. So investigating what's happening in Chinese public sector audit actually will give us its public sector governance issues, which is not only important for China itself, but also the nation otherwise trading with Chinese public sector. So that is a motivation he got uh, to do this research. So what is our objective? Very simple, I've got two objectives. First, to assess, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to assess the extent to which the Chinese Auditor General is independent compared with other Western societies, especially taking Australia as the basis for this comparison. Okay? And based on these findings, we are going to explore further the mechanisms that Chinese National Audit Office implementing to enhance their audit independence. These are our two objectives. Okay, so at the beginning I said something a little bit about literature, but I just want to give you more idea about what's happening uh, 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 in the research relating to audit independence. So audit independence, studies on audit independence dates back to 1941. I was not born, many of you were not born at the time anyway. Um, but majority of the studies investigated audit independence in the private sector. So what we did, I mean, we have an intention to publish this paper, and you know that most of the journals nowadays give a word limit, 5,000 to 6,000 words. So we thought that if we bring in extensive literature review in this paper, it will cross something like 8,000 to 10,000 words. So we only investigated the more recent literature starting from 2001 and onwards. And we found that among these literatures, most of them actually investigated the association between audit independence and non-audit services provided by auditors, such as consultancies, okay? Uh, the, the findings of the studies are a bit mixed, but majority found that, that when auditors provide non-audit service to their clients, um, qualified, number of qualified audit reports reduces, and when number of qualified audit uh, report reduces, or opinion reduces, they think that there is an independence issue. Auditors, they actually lose independence. Then there is a group of studies, they actually try to associate that whether audit committee or internal audit or good governance in an organization actually enhances um, independence of auditors. And most of these literally found that yes, when there is an audit committee in an organization, when there is an internal auditing system in an organization, when organization has a good governance, actually audit independence improves. Auditors' independence improve. Then there are a number of studies who investigated the role of external uh, regulatory authorities in enhancing audit independence. And these studies found that, yeah, if there are external regulatory authorities, they are watching auditors' functions, auditors' relationship with the corporations, audit independence or auditors' independence enhances. And there are some studies, they actually compared audit independence, taking culture as the variable. They actually studied the difference in culture and how audit independence actually differ uh, uh, between and among those cultures. So we see that all these studies are actually in a private sector context. And I said that these, these findings are not actually helping us because, for example, public sector audit, auditors, they don't provide any non-audit services. So those studies are not going to give us any, any help, any that 
uh, the, the relation between public sector auditors and their clients. There are also some literature, they started public sector audits, but we found that they're mainly normative. I mean, they're suggesting how the auditor's independence can be improved, and they stop there. That government can do this, executive government can do this, and these and these, and auditor independence can be improved. But we wanted to go further. We wanted to actually find out how independent is a public sector auditor. Okay, and so far, no published literature actually investigated audit independence objectively using some numbers, some numbers. That is what we're trying to do in this paper. What we did, how we analyzed our data, we actually used two analytical framework. One is um, interpersonal exchange theory, um, an excellent theory to, um, to understand the power relationship between two or more parties. Proposed by Fast Emerson in 1962, then Cartwright and Janda, 1968, and Goldman and Barlow further modified the theory in 1974. And we also used uh, a framework provided by Coghill in 2004. Coghill actually identified some factors, then he scored those factors, and then he scored independence score for Australian public sector auditors. I just came to know from Ian a few minutes back that Coghill actually was a speaker some time ago in Victorian Parliament, and he's now an academic in Monash. So this paper he actually presented at the ANU, we collected it and thought that, okay, he tried to um, score uh, public sector auditors independence with some numbers objectively. Why don't we try the same factors and test Chinese public sector auditors independence? <coughs> Excuse me. So interpersonal exchange theory, I mean, I'm just going to say briefly about it. Um, the theory says that the power of party A over party B rests implicitly on B's dependence on A. Okay? I depend um, for my research grants to Mark Evans. And Mark then actually will try to use his power over me. Okay? So that is all the interpersonal actions theory that the power of party A over party B rests implicitly on um, uh, the dependence on A, okay? Now, within the dependence, when there is an issue of reward or punishment, suppose A actually also mediate reward and punishment of B, okay? That A is going to give. In that case, B will become more dependent on A. A will try to impose all his other power to comply so that B can comply with those, okay? And um, power is actually understood as the capability of one party to influence the attitude or behaviors of another party. So this theory has got some similarities with um, um, in institutional theory, those who are, who you are aware of it, um, that institutional isomorphism uh, proposed by DiMaggio and Powell. Okay, got some similarities. Now, in brief, this is the interpersonal actions theory. Now, we can see that how actually can relate this theory with audit independence. So, uh, the power of a firm on the auditor will depend on the, the, the reward or punishment that the farm actually um, impose on auditors, isn't it? Power of the farm can be characterized by its ability to influence auditor through a reward. Auditor gets a contract to do the job, get the fees, so that is the reward the farm gives to the auditor. And as a result, farm try to influence the auditor's opinions, auditor's activities. On the other hand, the independence of the auditor depends on how strongly he or she actually withstand that influence, according to interpersonal exchange theory. 
farm try to impose its power because farm is paying fees to the auditor and auditor has to withstand that influence and that is the auditor's independence. So this is so far about public sec uh, private sector context. So what's happening in public sector? Okay, uh, I use, still use this auditor farm relationships. So the farm should be replaced here by auditor executive government relationship, something like that. Okay, so in public sector context, the independence of an auditor general is the absence of any direction from the executive government. Okay, that, that the auditor general should not be getting any directions from the executive government. So that is the independence of a public sector auditor or auditor general. So using this interpersonal actions theory, first we try to understand what independence means, both in the private sector context and public sector context. Next, we thought that, okay, we try to score um, based on Cockhill's framework, uh, the independence of Chinese Auditor General. So first I'll just explain a little bit about Coghill's framework, 2004. Coghill actually suggested that these factors actually affect, I mean, these factors, how they're handled by the executive government and the um, National Auditor Office of the Auditor General actually affect uh, a public sector auditor's independence or auditor general's independence. Okay, so for example, appointment may be an issue. How an auditor general is appointed. Tenure may be an issue, whether it's a short-term tenure, whether it's a permanent position, or whether executive government can remove the auditor general anytime they like. Uh, power of direction is an issue. Where the money will be coming from, is it independent? or is the executive government actually gives the money and thereby try to influence their power. And then uh, there are issues with parliamentary committee, how they actually handle um, uh, some of the uh, power issues uh, 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 on the relationship between auditor general and the executive government. So what Coghill actually did, he then scored, okay? Um, on the left-hand column, you see that there are more rows than actually those 10 factors because some of the factors have got sub-factors. Now, Coggill said that, for example, appointment requires a parliamentary committee approval. That can be, I mean, an auditor general can actually get a maximum score of 100 based on how the appointments were done or a zero based on how the appointment was done. Tenure can get maximum 100, depending on the issue of the tenure, how long it is, or it can get zero or any score in between. Then Coghill actually weighted those, all weights adds up to one. Um, weights are something like 0.05 for tenure, a bit higher, compared to weights on associate parliamentary committee under non-government control. So after multiplying the weights with the score, he actually uh, given to those factors. He found the rating out of 100 and added, and the final score is 83 for um, Australian Auditor General out of 100. He also did the same scoring for all other Auditor Generals um, uh, in Australia, in all other states, and there are different scores since we are just comparing with Chinese National Auditor General, uh, Chinese Auditor General, and Australian Auditor General, so we're just comparing Commonwealth and China. Okay, so it looks like compared to every better score, 83 out of 100 is not bad. And Coghill actually said that, well, um, Auditor General of the Commonwealth is, is really an independent person based on this score. Okay, now by this time you may be thinking that, okay, what is the validity of Coghill's framework? 
He did everything arbitrarily, intentionally, gave his score, why we are going to accept it? Okay, we also ask the same questions ourselves. Um, uh, but before going to that, I just want to give a little bit of idea about our methodology, methods, and data collection. Um, it is an interpretive study, so we actually explored the mechanism of independence of Chinese Auditor General, basically, and Chinese National Audit Office. In depth case study, so the case was actually Chinese National Audit Office. Um, we actually got a lot of help from archival documents. Uh, 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 Ian and Highway both actually visited China and the National Audit Office, and they collected all those documents written in Mandarin. They had a huge job to, I mean, not Ian, Highway has a huge job to translate those and find out. And um, of course, we conducted uh, a number of interviews with the employees of Chinese National Audit Office. Okay, so based on Cog Hill's scoring mechanisms, we, we actually studied all of these very, very in depth. How Cog Hill is actually giving um, 100 score here, and how he is actually using this, um, awaiting everything using the same formula, same procedure we actually used scoring for Chinese Auditor General. And we found that Chinese Auditor General scores 47 and a half out of 100. 47 and a half out of 100. Okay, so um, at the first stage, we are saying that, yeah, Chinese Auditor General is not as independent of executive government as the Australian Auditor General. Okay, so as I said just a few minutes back, these are all based on Coghill's framework, and you might be asking questions, the validity of Coghill's framework. Um, well, the paper was just a seminar paper, was never published, so not reviewed, we know that. The multipliers, uh, the multipliers, those are used by Coghills, um, these things, uh, uh, these multipliers are actually arbitrary. So there may be a validity issue, this score that we got. 47, of, 47 and a half out of 100, or 83 out of 100. But we used it because it's the only objective measure uh, that can be used, uh, that we got, which can be used to, me um, to measure the independence of an Auditor General. Okay? So what we did next, we went one step further we, we started searching that whether there are any other uh, factors or criteria that we can use to, to assess the independence of an Auditor General. Then we found that that international organization of supreme audit institutions, they have got some core principles they suggested. And China is a member of INTOSAI. Australia is also a member of INTOSAI, am I right? Yes, and those eight principles actually, if any country, they follow it properly, their, the independence of their Auditor General or their National Audit Office will be enhanced. So we thought that why not then we actually compare, study, or investigate the mechanisms of Chinese National Audit Office with those principles and find out how they score, where they stand. Okay, so if Coghill is not accepted, at least that international uh, standard will give us some idea. Okay, so these are the core principles, eight principles suggested by International Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions, and they claim that if member bodies, they follow these principles, 
the independence of their Auditor General or their Audit Office will be enhanced highly. So you see that the difference between Coghill and these principles are that Coghill is actually going directly to identify the independence, okay? And these are saying that the mechanism should be such, okay? The functioning of an audit office should be such which will actually enhance the independence, okay? Kind of a normative type, kind of a subjective type. So what we did, based on these principles, we went back to all those documents again, and then we tried to find out which of these principles actually made by Chinese um, audit office functioning and mechanisms. Okay, so we found that they made several of the principles, but still they critically fail on the principles or issue of the organizational independence based on the principle of the intosai, principles of the intosai. And when we actually asked them, the CNO readily admitted that, well, they do not actually try to use those principles or employ those or implement those. Okay? So based on Coghill's framework and based on Intosai principles, we find that, yes, Chinese Auditor General is not independent um, as we see the Auditor Generals in Western society. Okay? Well, we haven't stopped there because one of the respondents commented something which actually um, struck us actually, that what, what this gentleman is saying. Okay, one of the respondents, of course, admitted that they do not comply with Intosa principles or they do not really care about independence. So the gentleman said that although China failed to meet criteria established in Intosa's Lima and Mexico declaration on audit independence, the key issue was effectiveness, not independence. Simply they said that we don't care about independence, we just want effectiveness. That is a jargon that we are also using in Australia nowadays. Okay, effectiveness, outcome, output, efficiency, those kind of things. So that really struck us. Then we again did further investigation to find out how far the claim is acceptable. That okay, they're not independent, but they're effective. And I asked Highway, I have said that in Mandarin there is no comparable word of independence. Is this right? I don't know, in China. <laughs> there is no comparable word of independence, freedom in Mandarin, right? Okay. All right. So we did further investigation. And actually, we're still doing this investigation. This is just draft one, but we did further investigation about that claim. So we went back to all the documents again and wanted to find out, that is our, the answer to our second question, that wanted to find out the mechanisms of Chinese National Order Office um, to enhance the independence. Okay? So we found that in papers, whatever it is, in papers at least, they have constitutional support for an for a public sector audit system. Constitutional support, okay? We found that they have a public sector audit law. We found that there is a provision of an auditor general in the constitution. We found that they have, a, they have public sector audit standards even. We found that um, the, the relationship between auditor generals and state councils, they are explicitly mentioned in various papers. And also relationship between auditors and auditee also prescribed by law, okay? So we see these kind of things in any Western society's uh, public sector auditing systems that they exist, all right? We also found some other factors, some other merits, some other features of Chinese public sector audit system is they're really, really a bit of unique. One of them is reports are public, okay? So what the auditor generals do after the audit is completed, come into TV or national media, and it starts naming and shaming publicly. And the reports are, means available publicly. 
Okay, in Australia, it is also available publicly, but indirect way. They are present to the parliament. Once it is presented, then they become public, and you can access it. The difference is that, well, I will not think about accessing those documents to parliament. Rather, I will be sitting in my drawing room, or living room, or in general talking, and saying that these, these people are stealing money, and I'll be happy. That's pretty straight. That is what Chinese Auditor General is doing now. Pretty much different from Western society. They have a Nanjing Audit University, very special. In, in any country for the development of accounting or auditing system, you need three factors to work harmoniously. One is uh, demand for accounting or audit information, supply of accountants and auditors, and good regulation. Okay, so what's happening in Australia, we are supplying these auditors, again indirectly. We are giving them Bachelor of Commerce in Accounting, then they are studying accounting or working in National Audit Office, and they're becoming public sector auditors. But in China, they are making a special qualified public sector auditor through this Nanjing Audit University, so their supply channel is better than Australia, in my opinion. Amazingly, Chinese Auditor General is a member of the UN Board of Auditors and a current chair, if I'm not wrong. Okay? So that is also giving them a lot of confidence in changing their cultures in public sector audit independence issues. The fourth point is the most special. It doesn't exist in any Western society. That is, economic responsi responsibility audit. I mean, the Auditor General and the Chinese National Audit Office, they audit this economic responsibility towards the uh, municipality level even. I don't know what is the relevant term in China. Economic responsibility, that how much money was given, how they're spending, what happened, whether any money is stolen or not, and those are actually publicly declared. Okay? Economic responsibility audit. And the fourth one is actually, again, uh, contributing and changing Chinese public sector audit culture hugely. Okay? So then we thought that maybe, maybe Chinese National Audit Office, or the Auditor General, is not independent, but they are effective. An example of the economic, <coughs> excuse me, responsibility audit. In that five-year period, 2006 to 2010, they have audited 160,000 public sector agencies, people. And they have got adverse finding of 4%, which is believable anyway, 6,400. So they were dealt with by fines, dismissal, demotions, went to judiciary, went to Communist Party, dissonant process, and all those things. Simply, the example says that those miscreants were punished through that economic responsibility audit. Okay? So far, unaccounted for 5,625. We tried to find out what happened with those, but we couldn't find. We're still trying. So, our conclusion is that, well, CNO, the Chinese National Order Office, or the Chinese Auditor General are not independent in Western standard. Okay? But CNAO doesn't operate in a democracy, but in a unitary government where executive, the legislature, and the judiciary are not separated, but all are under the control of the Communist Party. So in such a unitary system, maybe the Western concept of independence may not be applicable, okay? Simply doesn't make any sense. And we also found that the Chinese National Audit Office has certain powers that Western Auditor Generals do not possess, such as that economic responsibility audits, which actually really, really helping them to change their cultures. Finally, so who should be the best? Independent and effective, Auditor General. Independent but not effective, or effective 
but not independent Auditor General. We're still searching this question, searching for answer for these questions. So what has happened is that uh, there may well be, I mean, we don't have the evidence yet of a widespread, I mean, that's, that's a really tough question to ask, but at least there's a distinct possibility that the way it, in which these economic responsibility audits have been implemented is indeed having some kind of effect in the, I wouldn't say democratisation, but I wouldn't say transparency and accountability within China. Um, could I also just make clear that the State Council is the equivalent of Cabinet in China and there are about 50 people in the Cabinet and the Auditor General is one of them. But uh, in the way the Chinese system of government works, that's the source of power and authority for the Auditor General as distinct from being outside that system. He's inside it but he's actually a very, uh, has the status of a minister. Declarations by the International Organization of Supreme Audit, Audit Institutions, which is, you know, intersize the acronym, and it's a sort of um, United Nations Club of Auditors, National Auditors General, has developed um, um, two declarations uh, of one in 1977 and one more recently in Mexico in 2007, and we referred to those, were a set of principles which were uh, intended to apply um, basically across the United Nations, so that, that the, uh, as Mania was saying, um, what uh, Coghill was doing was largely um, pretty evidential. You could go and see how Auditors General are appointed. You could go and see what the tenure is and, and things of that nature. The, the things that Interside developed are much more principle-based and they're principle based because they're intended to apply to jurisdictional systems which may be very different. So when we talk about um, Intersai and, and uh, the, the, the Mexico Declaration, we are in fact, we believe, addressing the kinds of issues that you're uh, raising there. You're right, there are literature, but what I'm saying that not too many actually empirically tested the independence issues. They're mainly normative. There are hundreds of reports maybe prepared in our system in Australia, checked, I mean, suggested how we can improve for Georgian's independence and all those things. In academia, so far, the published one I saw, they're saying the same thing that okay, this and this other thing, and our Auditor General is not independent. But they're not really empirically testing, taking a case, or some kind of objective measure, whether it is independent or not. So you're right, there are literature, but they're only, only report-based and normative. But if anybody, I mean, suggests me with some empirical, I really appreciate it, and empirical literature. Oh, the committee operates in a non-partisan manner. That's a specific reference to the um, Joint Committee on Public Accounts and Audit. Um, and if, if you, I think the argument there, uh, and this is Coghill's uh, version, right, his, his, assessment, his assessment, is that the uh, Joint Committee on Public Accounts and Audit operates in a, um, in a non-partisan fashion. Um, I guess you could buy an argument about that, but I, I think he has a point in that, um, in a relative sense at least, the JCPAA operates in a much more non-partisan fashion than almost every other committee that the, in the parliament. I'll defer to Highway on this, but I think the answer is no. It's the, 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 the numbers there are based on articles in the 
uh, in in-house newspaper of the Chinese National Audit Office. The Chinese National Audit Office has something like 90,000 people. It runs across um, the, the national level, provincial level, and the two lower levels of government, plus the um, special economic zones of various kinds that the, um, uh, operate within the Chinese system. Um, and they have this internal newspaper, and that uh, we have access to, to that. And basically, that comes from from that. Um, those numbers come fr from that article. My recollection is that that article doesn't provide a lot of further detail of the kind that you're asking about. Um, and we haven't chased up as to th that particular issue. Yeah, um, in private sector context, not public sector. The data in Europe, uh, I, I gave an example of a study. They used um, hockey sticks cultural framework, and they studied whether they affect all independence. All um, EU countries, European Union. I think there are, are some in Europe. Uh, one that we found that was um, potentially interesting was one in Nigeria, where they um, apparently the Commonwealth of Nations has developed a list of criteria for audit independent, intended for use in the Commonwealth, and someone had done this for Nigeria as opposed mm -hmm. to other, um, against those um, um, criteria, and, and that too was, was interesting. It, it wasn't numerical in the sense that we talked about, so it was just basically a list of factors and you just rated them and that was the answer. Well, um, you already got some suggestions, one from uh, Mark. Yeah, one from, yeah, from um, Ali. Uh, Mark said that you can have a comparison of countries of similar levels, like we can compare China being a part of a developing country. You can add other developing countries, or maybe you can find other country with centralized economy and compare, so you can expand that. And you know, Ali also said the same thing, that you can pick up an individual country and then you study their public sector audit independence. That can be done, yes. The short answer is yes, this is well recognized in the audit literature uh, as in private sector as well as public sector audit. Um, and people talk about it in, in the terms of, uh, in fact, you, if you've been reading carefully on our slides, uh, we talked about organisational independence and functional independence. And the organisational independence is primarily what Coghill was getting at because those are the things that you can observe relatively easily. Going in and saying, now, um, how easy is it to bribe you, auditor, is actually not an easy question to get an answer to. Or how on this interpersonal exchange theory, are you dependent? And how dependent are you and how easy is it to influence the audit results? Um, that's not something that we're going to get our heads around by going off to Beijing for a week. Right? So that, that's actually a, um, there's a, that's a much more difficult thing to get at. We can observe a number of the things that the Chinese National Audit Office does to try and address that. Um, they have a large number of internal rules about what auditors can and can't do on the job. They also have uh, a series of processes where um, if they believe that there is a risk to the um, independence of the audit in the functional sense, what they will do is bring in auditors from another part of the country. And they actually describe that to us. So that they, they'll... Um, um, bring in auditors from Tianjin to do an audit in Beijing, for example, um, if, if they feel that there is a risk. So they, they, have, they have some procedures. Uh, we uh, alluded to them in a very generic sense there in one of our last slides, uh, which are intended to address those sorts of issues. And the real question is how effective are they? Um, we hear anecdotes of all sorts of uh, horrible stories about you know people who come in and audit. The auditor arrives, they have a nice lunch, and then they sign off on all the papers two hours later. Um, 
how you sort of match those anecdotes against what really happened and the general, general sense. Um, uh, I'd love to think of a way of getting into that, but I mean, there's, there are also major difficulties, not the least of which is, uh, one, all of this stuff takes place behind an audit act which says if the auditor sees it, it's confidential until they make their report. And there's a second issue, of course, and that is that the disclosure of this information is embarrassing <coughs> wherever it occurs, not just in China. We haven't looked at that. Um, it's a major task to understand how the Chinese um, system. governmental system operates. Yeah. Um, and and um, I guess I, I have a sort of gut feeling, if you like, that um, if the, we are interested in, in enabling people in the, the Chinese system to improve the transparency and accountability of what happens, and so that there are fewer secret deals going on, um, the Chinese National Audit Office is one of the best things we've got going for us. Now, it's not going to win every um, battle, if you like, and yes, they may. The, well, I guess the fact that um, the fact that there is a growth of these organisations suggests to me, as a, just an initial reaction, that that is maybe the f the, f the uh, evidence that the Chinese National Audit Office actually is doing something right.